What's up everybody, this is Jeremy with Gamertel.com and this is the home space for Sodium 2 Project Velocity. Uh, this is the first PlayStation Home game that uh, has been released. It takes full advantage of uh, the PlayStation Home Update version 1.5 which uh, gives developers uh, better tools to make games within home that are, in, that are real time multiplayer games and it gives them better physics, better graphics and it, 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 it's efforts is to make uh, these games on par with uh, console based multiplayer games or multiplayer games that you download from the PlayStation Store. You know, to make you forget in a way that you are even in PlayStation Home. So, uh, Sodium 2 is the sequel to Sodium 1. It's like a futuristic racer, and as you can see, there are some racers right there. And what I'm going to do is not only just show you around this space a little bit here which is uh, full of advertisements, but uh, show you the single player and the multiplayer portions of, uh, of this game so you can see how it runs and see if you like it or not. So let's just start it right here. You can also start it from the other side. And the hubs for multiplayer and single player games are not in the same place. Uh, multiplayer seems to be tucked away into a corner, uh, but we'll show you that a little bit later. The options here, you can go into the garage, you can check out helping options or you can exit right now we're going to look at the single player then to the garage then to multiplayer so let's just get a quick race and right here's arcade not highlighted not sure why it'll be added soon there's your answer so let's go to quick race let's pick a random track and it starts up immediately So in about a few more seconds, we are going to take this track for a spin. Now you press X to accelerate, press circle to deploy some rocket boosters, and L1 and R1 uh, are used to slow you down a bit for when you're making uh, turns around tight corners. Now if you're like me, games like Burnout have kind of warped you into thinking that you can drift around corners, and that's not the case here. You actually have to slow down and go around corners um, this is not really like a crazy arcade style racer it might remind you of wipeout minus the weapons and you can also see that my ship looks pretty plain it's white it's just kind of blah all together but you can also customize your ship using uh, credits that you earn from playing the game multiplayer and single player and you'll unlock more things as you level up or you can get credits or you can just go to the um, to the PlayStation Store and buy the different parts. They usually cost around 99 cents. We'll check that out after this. And I'm hitting walls like crazy. Now this game, you can see right now, it's moving really, it's moving really, really smoothly. Um, it does, in a way, make you forget that you are playing inside a PlayStation Home, especially if you really, really get into it. There's no stuttering, there weren't any hiccups. Uh, I did try playing this earlier, and I tried to get into a multiplayer match, and it caused um, everything to crash. I got kicked out of home and everything, but you know, little bugs now and then are gonna pop up. And you see the credits are uh, the yellow uh, numbers, and XP are the green numbers. I'm on level three, going up to level four. And it gives you tips after every match. And now I'm going to exit this, go back to the main menu, and show you the garage. Alright, so here's the garage right here. As you play the game, you'll unlock the ability to purchase different uh, mods for your ship. You see here, I have rocket booster mounts. Let me turn this down for a bit. You can see here I have Rocket Booster Mount 1, Rocket Booster Mount 2, Afterburners, Engines, Air Brakes, my flight computer, and the paint scheme. So if I just wanted to say, tweak my Afterburners, you can see on the right hand corner of the uh, screen shows you what I currently have equipped. It's called the Bone Shaker. It has one star and it's not very special. But the other things that I have unlocked, such as the Ignition DX, you can see it adds to my acceleration and my speed, it decreases my stability, or the Ignition, which does the same thing. Now here's the difference between these two. The Ignition DX right here can be purchased from 
the PlayStation Store for what I'm guessing is about 99 cents. Let's just check it out. When you try to uh, buy it, it says you can't put it on your ship because you don't own it. So you have to go to the commerce point and purchase it with real money. And oh, this is not 99 cents. Some things are, but this is $1.49 to get this. Now, if you want, if you don't want to spend money, you can also get the ignition, which is the exact same thing. It gives you the exact same acceleration speed and takes away from your stability, but you can purchase it using credits that you earn from just playing races. But the but it costs 35,000 credits to buy it. So you would have to play for a decent amount of time in order to work up enough credits to purchase this. And of course, the alternative is just drop a dollar 50 of your own money to unlock it, which I think a lot more people will be interested in doing because you get a cooler ship faster and it costs you a few bucks if you really want to get everything going. You know, the same thing happens for for just about everything that you can put on your ship. Take the paint scheme, for example. Uh, the only things I have available is this white, um, the silver, I guess, um, paint color. Uh, but I can also do crimson, I can do bumblebee, I can do classic green, I can do salamander. But the only one that I can pay for with credits is Bumblebee, and Bumblebee costs 25,000 uh, credits. Everything else is 99 cents. So uh, that's pretty much the trend that you're going to see with just about every um, aspect of the customization. Uh, that's just how free-to-play games work. You can't really blame Sodium 2 for implementing that. So uh, right now, let's try to get into a multiplayer match. Hopefully it does not crash. Uh, once you go to multiplayer, it will automatically warp you over to the corner like it just did there so that you can uh, engage in multiplayer. And here I am, a bunch of people around here. You can also create your own lobbies if you like. Um, what I've typically seen is that when people play one match, they typically uh, leave the lobby. And okay, let's just jump into someone's access denied huh is it private oh oh that's it that's interesting to, to uh to bring up see that now this says this is a class three session my vehicle is a class one so you don't really have to worry about getting into matches with people that have far more advanced ships uh than yourself uh looks like i'm gonna have to create a session since everyone else is full let's just call this section speed and hopefully someone will join and you can vote which track you want to be on. I'm just going to say random. And while we wait for someone to come in, we're going to do a little bit of an edit here and I'll come back once we got a match. And we have a match here, folks. Uh I believe these lobbies you can only have up to 3 people playing at once. Uh there's one other person playing with me now. We both have class 1 vehicles, so we're both um, beginners and all this. We're going to see who's the best. Here we go. Now, what I typically do is at the very beginning, I use one of my rocket boosters because it's a good straight path in the very beginning here. And then I typically wait until the end to use the, to use the other one. See at the bottom of the screen, you can see uh, how close your opponents are in proximity to yourself. And we're going to try to beat this person here. Of course, the key is to not run into the walls because you get like a little uh, ping pong ball effect. You know, you just bounce off one thing and bounce on to another. You know, I guess a pinball effect would be more uh, gaming related. And as tempted as I am to look down and see where my competitor is, it'll just cause me to mess up even more. I've got one more rocket booster just to deploy at the very last minute. And once again, you see there are, there are no stutters, there are no hiccups. The controls um, are are one to one. You know, there, there's no there's no delay, there's no latency in these controls at all. When I go left, I go left, and I go right, I go right. 
So it looks like this PlayStation Home version 1.5 thing is actually really working at this point. Can't wait to see what else uh, developers can make. There was a comment on PlayStation Blog about how it would be cool if there were some multi, some uh, RPGs in this. And there, of course, there's no confirmation, but the uh, PlayStation Blog person, I can't remember what his name was, who wrote the post, said, yeah, that would be interesting. So, uh, Dragon Chan, it wasn't a very good race on my part, um, but I managed to pull off with a win here. 12 seconds faster. I can just continue right there. And you'll gain uh, credits. You see, I only got 12 credits for winning the race and 22 experience. And we're just going to exit out of here. We're not going to play any more matches. But uh, yeah, you can see right now that's typically what Sodium 2 Project Velocity uh, is. Uh, there were no uh, technical errors or glitches uh, so far since I've been recording this right now, but like I said earlier, there was a bit of freezing going on and I got kicked out of home because of the servers or whatever. But this is typically what we have to look forward to uh, in PlayStation Home. We're gonna hopefully see a lot more games, hopefully of uh, different genres. I can't wait to see some shooters in there that take advantage um, of this new version 1.5 uh, tools so that we can come into home and spend more time in here because honestly I have not liked PlayStation Home but with something like this I can see myself you know getting back into it so uh, go ahead check it out right now it's under the new and recommended section in the PlayStation Home Navigator that pops up when you first boot up the service download the area you come here jump into the match have fun invite your friends it's all good so if anything else pops up with PlayStation Home and their new multiplayer features We'll be right here to let you know. Until next time, this is Jeremy from GamerTel.com. Seeing you later.